Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, June 3rd. Tesla surprised many by confirming that buyers of the cheapest Model 3 now have access to the full $7,500 federal tax credit instead of the previous $3,750. As the base Model 3 retails for $40,240, this change means that it now starts at $32,740 after the federal incentive. If that's combined with state incentives, as exist in many of the popular markets, it can easily cost less than $30,000. Now, it's unclear how Tesla achieved this, and if it means that the new Model 3 rear-wheel drive and long-range all-wheel drive now have U.S.-made battery cells, or if there's a new deal that allows for them to be made with Chinese cells. But either way, this puts the cost of ownership of a Model 3 becoming less than a Honda Accord or a Toyota Corolla in many of the most popular EV markets. Tesla has updated its Model Y long range in Canada to a Chinese import. It unfortunately comes with less range and the same price, however. It features a range of 497 kilometers, significantly lower than the previous 531 of the previous version. Now, with the lower range, it's possible that Tesla decided to switch to the lithium iron phosphate chemistry for the pack. The automaker has been increasingly switching to cheaper battery cell chemistries over the last few years. The vehicle is imported from China and built at the Gigafactory Shanghai plant. Last week, we reported on Tesla shipping as many as 10,000 vehicles from China to Canada just in this quarter. Volkswagen has revealed the much-anticipated long wheelbase version of the ID Buzz electric microbus. It's got an extra row of seats and starts deliveries next year in the U.S. The new ID Buzz version is much like the two-row European spec, but with a little more of just about everything. It has 282 horsepower as opposed to 201, with a top speed of 99 miles per hour instead of 90, 91 kilowatt hours for the battery pack instead of 82, and it's 10 inches longer. It also gets an openable rear window, unlike the two-row version. Volkswagen hasn't announced the range of the three-row version, although the European spec has 263 miles on the WLTP cycle. While the North American spec does have a larger battery, it's going to be longer and heavier. Although no price has been announced, we're told that the charging will be capped at around 200 kilowatts, so there's that. A lower price might be necessary because the ID Buzz will be built in Germany and imported to the U.S., which means that it won't get access to the full tax credit like the U.S. built ID4 does. Jaguar has announced that it is recalling all of their iPACE EVs in the U.S., over a battery fire risk. Last summer, we released a report highlighting our suspicion that the Jaguar would have the same battery problem as the Chevy Bolt EV. And now Jaguar is indeed facing the same problem. Jaguar is now recalling all 2019 to 2024 model year Jaguar I-PACE vehicles built at the Graz Vehicle Assembly Plant from June 5, 2018. The automaker is taking a similar software-based remedy approach to Chevy by limiting the battery state of charge. Now that band-aid didn't really do the trick for Chevy and they wound up issuing a total physical recall to switch the batteries just over a year ago. So Jaguar has since already announced that they are rebranding and hopefully uh, from our end they do an actual physical recall instead of just a recall to change the software. And we're hoping that they are not trying to rely on their JLR brand change to have a different reputation than what they have just incurred right now. Lucid revealed that it is raising roughly $3 billion through a public stock sale and new investment from its majority holder, Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund. Lucid, like most EV startups, is struggling with rising input costs and work to ramp production. To make matters worse, falling valuations are making it harder to access cheap funding. Despite Lucid reassuring that it would have funding for at least the next year, they started raising stock to $3 billion through the sale, Around $1.2 billion will be from a sale of 173.5 million shares of the common stock. Lucid expects to hit the lower end of the production guidelines between 10,000 and 14,000 models in total this year. Lucid stock dropped over 10% following the news, settling around $6.55 per share. Rivian stock price is down over 91% from its all-time high, which was set shortly after going public in 2021. Now, with the share prices falling, Rivian may be at risk of losing their spot on the NASDAQ 100 index. 
The NASDAQ 100 is a stock market index comprised of the 100 largest non-financial companies on the exchange. Rivian joined the index this past December as part of its yearly rebalancing. But J.P. Morgan analyst Min Moon wrote in a note this week that the NASDAQ 100 generally removes the smallest members of the group if the company is weighted at less than 0.1% for two straight months. And Moon noted that Rivian was below the 0.1% mark as of April 28th and May 31st, leading her to believe that the EV maker will be kicked out as soon as this month, or the third Friday this June. According to Moon, Rivian can be replaced by On Semiconductor, which is ranked as a top eligible company. General Motors and South Korean advanced EV battery materials company POSCO Future M revealed an additional investment on their new cathode facility in Ontario, Canada, now exceeding $1 billion. The new funding will help increase cathode active material production, or CAM production, and the precursor material, called PCAM, and all of this for the North American market. General Motors revealed its joint venture with LG Energy Solutions back in 2019 to produce battery cells for the Ultium platform. And now the Ultium CAM joint venture will support the production of around 360,000 Chevrolet, Cadillac, GMC, Buick, and Bright Drop EVs, all between 2025 and 2030. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Jun Hanzawa brought to my attention something that I didn't know about the Toyota BZ4X. Turns out that the vehicle is software locked at how many quick charges it can perform in a day, currently capped at three, up from the initial cap of two charges per day. Now, this is not good for Toyota, and especially their customers. My previous opinion of the BZ4X was that it was, I guess, harmless or maybe fine. It wasn't all that competitive in terms of range or price, but I don't really think that's entirely necessary to succeed in today's EV market. I think people would like it and enjoy the electric transition with their favorite brand. But admittedly, the slower cap charging, I felt like it really wasn't that big of a deal, since most EV early and modern adopters don't really use the fast stop as fast as they possibly can. Some of the fastest charging cars, like the Porsche Taycan, either they can't find a compatible charger on their way, or they just simply stop for longer periods on road trips because the driver suffers from road fatigue. Now, although the polar opposite of a 0 to 60 mile per hour acceleration does exist, I feel like people are commonly citing the 0 to 60 spec, even if they never plan on using it. And I think there's very much a parallel for like the fastest charging car. I kind of want to be somewhere longer than 12 minutes after I've gone for 300 miles. Now, I'm not making excuses. Just follow me on this one. Now that I know that Toyota capped the daily charges on their car to just two, I think that's terrible. That means that they're artificially limiting how much someone can drive their own car that they paid money for. And I don't like that one bit. I'm very much a right to repair advocate. Now, Toyota might say that the purpose is to add longevity to the car's lifetime, but I feel like they should let the owner make that decision and not the company. You heard it here first, folks. My opinion on the BZ4X has changed. I thought it was just a rushed effort with strange drawbacks, like having no glove box, that's weird. But now I see it as a method for Toyota to quote unquote, serve the market, but also dilute the market with heavy oversight that exhibits poor faith in their own product. Thanks for your comments, June. And thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.